Hi everybody, welcome down to Carter's Golf. Welcome to the 10th hole. This is part four of the Black Tea Challenge and currently one over par. Let's see if I can just salvage a level par out of this. My goal actually is to break 75 because this golf course is 7,700 yards off the back tees. It's an absolute beast of a hole. And we come onto the 10th hole. Nice house, isn't it? Come onto the 10th hole. And this is statistically the hard, one of the hardest, I think it's the hardest driving hole on the DP World Tour Championship, purely because it's just tight and so straight as well. So it's a very, very difficult driving hole. So 439 yard starter. I'm actually gonna hit three wood. I feel like I'm gonna be a little bit straighter with that. I'm gonna leave myself a longer approach shot, but fairways produce good scores generally for me. So that's what my goal is right now. I've had a warm up on the range. I feel ready and raring to go. Today is a separate day to yes, the, the front nine because of my coaching schedule. So I played the front nine yesterday afternoon. Today I've been coaching in the morning, done half an hour or so on the driving range and I'm back ready and raring to go. One over par through nine. Let's see if today's a new day and I can drop under par. But I had the, I had the ball going quite nicely yesterday. Hit it really, really well. Irons in particular were hit nicely. So hoping that I can continue that form, but also improve on it as well. Let's see how we go. Okay, wind slightly off the right hand side. So it suits my draw in a way that I'm just gonna aim this out to the right rough. And just let it feed back. Draw a little. It's not drawn that much, actually. Sorry. Right rough, but no danger. Well, hopefully we're not starting the vlog as we mean to go on. Just missed the fairway. I actually didn't think I'd be able to reach this, so I've hit that quite better than expected. I'm looking if I've got a swing, and the flag's at the front, so I don't mind even if I leave this slightly short. Certainly pot luck now how this ball comes out. If I stab, I'm just gonna try and stab into the back of it. I'm actually just gonna try and hit it like a normal golf shot. I've got my backswing. Well. Yeah, I've got a backswing, so I'm just gonna be really aggressive into my downswing. My only focus right now is just making sure I get club on ball. And I can reach it. Well, I know I can reach it, but I'm quite confident about this. I'm obviously not going at the flag. It's just that right edge of the green. I'm just going to be really, really aggressive into the back of the ball. Slightly above my feet, so gripping down, getting my weight to my left side, just going to really stab this out hard as I can. No idea. Ah, there it is. Yeah, short. It's about 50 short. Possibly felt like I caught it a bit heavy, but I didn't even feel the ball. I think I just hit it with the wood chippings. Right, saving par down the tenth. Not ideal. In hindsight, was that the correct club selection? Probably not. Um, I think ideally hitting a seven iron punch, going up two clubs, half swinging it with a seven iron punch would have been better. Um, I've got a tricky little third shot there coming up. Let's see. Okay, so not the easiest of third shots. Lies around this side of the green. Lies around the green here super tight grass there's not much grass there so very difficult to try and get the idea of sliding the club under it's always going to be a kind of very much a compressed strike not much not much leeway in terms of getting away with it so to speak so I like to try and low, run these in a little bit lower if i can but it's also quite a big upslope as well i'm going to hit a little 54 degree and there's a bit of an upslope just onto the green so if a 54 degree can land there with the way the ball spins off these lies, it should be good. I might even finish it short. I can be quite aggressive, I think. So difficult to try and judge how the ball is going to react. More difficult to judge how the ball is going to react based on how you strike it. I don't strike it perfectly every time, so I don't really know. 
Nothing worse than when you strike it amazing and you leave it really short. So I'm gonna, there's a little pitch mark to the left of the flag. I'm gonna aim at that because I've had to strike, I'm gonna assume that I'm gonna strike it perfect. Come on, up and down. Ah, oh, I struck it really nice actually. It's landed right on the front edge where I said, took a big first bounce and then checked. So it probably rolled about six foot past. Not a bad strike, difficult shot. Probably would have been better with a bit more loft to help it, but hindsight is a wonderful thing. It'd be really nice to kind of, to get up and down early on, early doors, get through this hole. Probably a little bit of momentum, lost the fact that I couldn't play the 18 in one go. But we're not going to use that as an excuse until the end. All right, downhill. Really don't see it breaking that much. So frustrating. I literally, I was about, it was about halfway, and I just said, I was about to call it. Okay, so 11th hole, probably one of the, one of two of the really the easiest holes on the golf course in regards to it being quite short in length, 401 yards. So I can get quite close to the green here with driver and the chance of an up and down. Now from back here, it's a tighter looking tee shot. I'm gonna tee off on the one in front, it gives you a wider angle of the actual hole. But I'm gonna be aiming with the wind off my back as well, I'm gonna be aiming at that left bunker and the ball will generally move ever so slightly in the air from left to right. 290 to the bunker on the left, so I am aiming to kind of get past it and just right of it. Pushed, not good. Push, cut, push, cut. Bad shot, bad shot, come on. Okay, so if there's one hole in the world where I can hit a really ugly high shot, it's this one. So the tee box was over here. That's why it looks horrific off the tee. And to be honest with you, it's not great. I really wanted to get kind of up in between the two bunkers and good clean look at the flag. Now, what I will say from here is that I've got a clean look at the flag just not from the yardage that I wanted to have it from. Now that flag is in a pretty awkward place there as well. Now I see it, it's cut behind that bunker. And from here it's 173 to the flag. So on what was an, a shortish hole, I've now left myself a very long approach shot. A very viable option. Do I hit an A-time? Hit an A-time, maybe catch a tiny flyer. A-time goes about 160. So if I, clear, if I hit an A-time, clear that left bunker, which I should do in terms of the distance, one leap, go down towards 170 or so. My seven iron will land at around about 170, 175. So that's gonna make me hit the ball too far. Wind, if anything's gonna help. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for the kind of the high-ish looking eight iron. Now it's quite thick actually, it's quite grabby. So there's every chance I'm gonna catch a flyer. I'm gonna put the ball slightly further forward in my stance just for a slightly higher ball flight. And I'm gonna ignore the flag to an extent because it is cut left side of the green. I'm just gonna go try and go straight over the middle of that bunker. If I go in it, I do fancy my chances of getting up and down. If I get over it, I've got a good chance of birdie. But I need to strike this perfectly first. Like that. Oh baby, be good, be good. Oh yes. Whew. Okay, we're over the bunker. Just right at the flag. Hopefully it's gone 170, you know, just Give myself a chance of birdie after a terrible drive. 
Come on. Right, so what I rate as a very good approach shot there, with definitely the right club. Seven iron would have probably pitched somewhere around here. My pitch marks actually cleared the flag, so definitely caught a little flag. So it was 173 to the flag. This is probably pitched 10 yards, five, 10 yards further, 10 yards further. So this has definitely gone about 180 in the air and then just finished here. So I mean, that's a big A time, but definitely because of the, the way the lie was, little bit of wind helping as well. So right club was chosen. If you're familiar with golf courses in Dubai, you know this is not an easy, very easy two put. Down the hill ever so slightly there, then moving up the hill and definitely right to left. Also over here, we need to read the try and read the grains to see which way the grass is um, is growing. It makes a huge difference to the pace of the putt, and it can also make a big difference to the line on w in which you take. If you're having a right to left putt, but the grain's left to right, it does make a difference to how much it's going to break. Sometimes the grain can overpower the break. It's crazy. From here, I think we've just got to be trying to think of a realistic two, realistically trying to get down in two, because this is not easy. So we're going to go downhill left to right, then it's going to shape up the other side, uphill right to left. So I'm, it's definitely going to move more right to left, So, I'm at, but it's going to shift off the left early. Right, we're going to aim just right of the hole. Okay. It's going to move left to right ever so slightly down the hill at the fastest point at my um, ball speed. And then at the end, it's going to move right to left. Now it's, can I execute? That's generally the, ge the general gist of the problem. Okay, I'm going to leave the flag in so we can see. A few practice strokes, trying to get the pace of down the hill, up the hill. It's going up the hill, it's moved a lot more than I expected and it didn't move as much from here. Pace is perfect though. <sighs> Move more right to left than I expected. Right, let's bring you all a bit closer. Okay, so yeah, not the not the easiest of putts to leave myself with. Um, easier the fact that it's uphill into grain, moving ever so slightly from left to right. So I'm going to be quite firm with this into that kind of left half of the hole. But I mean, I'm trying to say I'm gonna aim left half of the hole, I need to get my side of it perfect as well. I need to hit a good stroke, maintain the control on the face. I'm gonna pick a spot, I actually pick a spot in the hole, piece of dirt, make my target small. Whew. Try to move on me. Okay, a decent four in the end there, poor drive, really nice approach shot to get out of that bad situation. And two decent puts, yeah, okay, we'll take that. Two over par though, work to do. I think this next hole could be the biggest difference for me in, in like kind of going from normal tees to back tees. I'm basically gonna tee off from this person's garden. So we would normally tee off, not even from this tee in front, actually, just on the other side of that tree, there's a tee box and it leaves us with a drive and a flick, literally a flick. When I watched Danny Willett here in the final round, he actually hit it into that right bunker, that first right bunker. Now, normally we're making sure that we don't go into that bunker in the center of the fairway. That is how far back this is compared to what we normally play. So this is gonna be interesting. 476 yards and the all the way uphill, so that far, far bunker is greenside. So huge driving hole this, needs to be a good one. Not like the last. Building in the distance, straight as possible. Crazy t-shirt this. Not sure. Could be left of that left bunker. No idea. 
no idea just a slight pull that was a definite reaction to my previous drive on the last hole where i didn't want to hit it high right and i've just gone low left right a bit scrappy this first part wow <laughs> so remember i said it's a wedge from a second shot usually about in line with the bunker there on the right hand side 228 to the flag wow definitely not going to struggle for a um, for a title on this video as you've already seen anyway but scrappy wood chipping day so it's 200 yards to clear the middle of the bunker to the right of the flag so if i can do that then I'm all right, I think I've got a two put. That flag, it must be right on the back edge for it to be 228 from here. Um, oh man, this is, ball's hanging below my feet. I'm quite lucky in the fact that I'm on a bit of crest, I'm on a bit of crest. So I can kind of, I can kind of get at the ball a little bit better than I could do on the 10th hole. But this needs to be struck perfect. I'm gonna aim at the flag. And I'm just gonna, if anything, really just hope that the, the natural lie of the land here is going to help me move the ball from left to right. But every time I put the club down, the ball moves ever so slightly. So it's, an un it's a strange little lie. All right. I need to be so aggressive into the back of this ball. It has to carry 200 yards. Four iron usually should do. I mean, it should go about 210 in the air. But I don't often hit it off wood chippings. I've sod it, hit it so good. Go! It's not moved. Oh, I've cleared it. Oh my God, that could be the greatest shot I've ever hit on camera. I've cleared it. So I've cleared the bunker. I've cleared right on the line of the flag. I could not have hit that any sweeter. Oh, wow. That could be my best shot ever. Okay, so when I said it was going to be the best shot I ever hit on camera, I actually just meant it was a bang average shot with a really good strike and not enough club. <laughs> there it is, he's in the bunker. A little bit frustrated actually about that. I really honestly thought it had cleared that lip, but it didn't. And now we're fighting again. This part has been a real battle. If I can get up and down, it will be like a little bit of a victory in regards to the fact I've not played well, but I've scored mm, reasonable considering how hard these holes are. But for now, rather than obsessing about my score, to get up and down. I need to think about this shot, so I need a high shot, high there, I need to eight, eight, nine feet from the air, this. It's only going to the flag. Okay, it's downhill <clears throat> once it lands. Flag, that rate mark. I'm going to let this chase a little bit. I'm not worried about getting the ball high enough, just thinking about my distance control. So I don't mind it releasing down, it's going to move left to right down the hill. It's good. Oh, all that running for no reason. It's about six to eight feet short. Not bad though. Ah, oh, the more you run, the more you rake. Wasn't a bad bunker shot, but I really don't think it was good enough. Uh, it said six feet, I meant 16 feet. It's downhill, that. I'm surprised that's not released on me a little bit more. Frustrating. I really have to hold this putt now. Get to this next part three. Two over par for the round. Right. 
Bogey. Guys, that is the end of part four. And uh, it's another bogey. So I've gone bogey, par, bogey. Two over par for this par, which gives me three over total for the round. My goal is to beat 75 off the black tee, 7,700 yards. I need to find a birdie. 70, 73 is my new target. I can find two birdies. They're definitely out there for me. Come on, we can do this. Just need to get better off the tee. This golf course is so peeling. If you miss the fairway, so, so difficult. Rough's quite thick or you're into wood chippings. It's very inconsistent with how the ball reacts. Find yourself in these bunkers. They're huge and they're very difficult to get your distance control. So I think what this vlog really wants to, for me, I wanted to show is how amazing these tour pros are. So when they came here, they're shooting scores that you just think that's, that's just class. Four days in a row, they're hitting the middle of the fairway there. If they don't, their recovery shots are superb. Their iron play into greens is amazing. I know that if I'd have hit this fairway, genuinely, I would have been 30, 20, 30, 20 yards further up the fairway. I'd have had a six iron into the green. It would have landed around about here. The down slope would have taken it towards a flag and I've had a birdie attempt. I know from a six iron distance, I'm very, very comfortable hitting quite close to a flag or within 20 feet from, from, from 190 yards around. That's in my mind, I feel quite comfortable. But if I miss the fairway, suddenly I've got a four iron from the wood chippings. It's a very different golf course. So those boys are just unreal. How they can hit those distances and score that well, that's why I teach. <laughs> Uh, guys, thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for Carter's Golf. Please do subscribe. Part five is coming. I'm going to make a couple of birdies between now and hole at the end of the, the, end of the round. I'm going to get myself back to shooting 73. Why did I say 73? I meant 70. Five birdies. Yeah, okay.